Ladies and gentlemen, good morning from the team of Deutsche Euroshop in Hamburg. This is Willem Werner speaking, and I'm pleased to present you the preliminary results for 2018, which we have published yesterday evening. I'm here together with my colleague Olaf Borkers and Patrick Kiss, our head of IR. I'd like to start with the operations, and here with the retail turnover of our tenants and the split up by retail segments, which you will find on slide two. The operating numbers 2018 are, as already reported for Q3 and after the first half year of 2018, still disappointing. While the numbers have improved in Q4, the Christmas sales could not offset the low sales in the first nine months of last year. We have shared with you the obvious explanation already in November. Last year's extreme weather, uh, winter weather at the beginning of 2018 was immediately followed by the extreme summer conditions, which lasted well into the autumn. This was especially the case for Germany, but also to some extent for our other portfolio countries. The results were less customer traffic and correspondingly also less turnover for most of our tenants. Following the news of other market participants, one can see that this effect has not only influenced us, but especially the fashion and shoe segment. But let's now look into the details of the numbers. Starting with the overall picture, we have seen a minus of 2.2% for the absolute retail turnover of the portfolio, with an increase of 0.3 in our foreign centers and a decrease of 2.8 in Germany. On a like-for-like -like basis, our retailers last year saw a minus of 0.5 abroad and a minus of 2.8 in Germany. That's a total minus of 2.3% for our portfolio on a like-for-like -like basis. The performances for the various segments within our portfolio were as follows. In our German centers, and again on a like for like basis, all but one sector saw lower, saw lower numbers. Especially impacted were shoes and leather and fashion, as well as general retail, department stores, and hypermarkets, down between 4 to 5.5%. Electronics came out with minus 2.3%, sports and food catering reported 1.8 lower sales. Health and beauty was unchanged, while food and, food and supermarkets lost 2.4%. Sorry. Services saw a minus of 0.3%, which was driven by comparably better sales of travel agencies, which are in that segment and which performed not as bad as people used the nice weather to travel more. So, besides all the efforts we made to further improve our centers and business, Let's hope that the weather conditions in 2019 follow a more normal pattern. On the basis of the just reported turnover numbers, our rent to sales ratio now stands at 9.3 after 9.1 at year end 2017. For the same reason mentioned before, our footfall numbers were lower as uh, in comparison to last year. We saw a minus of 2.7% for Germany, and in our centers abroad, we saw a minus of 4%. Abroad, besides the climate impact, there were also special influence factors in the catchment area of our centers, which explain the effect. For example, in Klagenfurt, there are several big uh, street construction projects in progress, one even materially disturbing the full regional traffic on the important highway heading in and out from Klagenfurt towards Vienna, and while the large catchment area we address uh, or with a large uh, catchment area we address, such big impediment is notice noticeable for the city arcade in Klagenfurt. This is temporary, but it's there at the moment. And as mentioned before, in Gdansk opened a new big center not too far away from the Galleria Baltitska, so it's normal that many customers will find their way also to the new player in town, which will gradually normalize over time. So, the, so far, uh, the operating numbers. Let's now look at our tenant base and the developments in the last year on page three. The changes in our tenant structure compared to the previous year were minimal. H&M is still our biggest tenant in terms of rental income, accounting now for 3.5% of our rents. H&M is followed by Seconomy, with its brands Media Market and Satur, contributing 2.7% of our rental income. Our top 10 tenants now account for 22.2% after 21.8% end of 2017. As before, our health is set up, and by the way, we are, uh, there was no visible change in our occupancy ratio, which was always around 99%. On page 4, we now show into the maturity profile of our lease agreements with 
5.1 years of rental income supported by lease contracts, we feel comfortable going forward. There is an ongoing trend that some tenants now prefer shorter lease terms. On the one hand, they are aligning the lease terms more to their operational and market needs, uh, needs for example, concerning the life cycle of the products and shop concept. And of course, on the other hand, uh, they also become more risk sensitive to the in the current market environment. However, such development does not need to have a negative impact in itself, as it can support a more frequent modernization of shop concept. Now let's come to the financials and the preliminary results for 2018, and uh, starting with the valuation of our shopping centers on slide five. <coughs> Some general remarks at the beginning. The year 2018 showed a visible decline for demand of shopping centers in Germany and a more normalized market situation in the other countries we are operating in. Correspondingly, on average, prices in Germany decreased just slightly, and this development and some adjustments in expectations for the development of rents, as well as some higher capex requirements, were the main drivers for the small depreciation of our assets in 2018. Overall, the valuation results were, uh, was in comparison to the stock minus 1.4% or an amount of 58.3 million euro, thereof minus 55.7 coming from the consolidated assets after minorities and minus 2.6 coming from the assets held at equity. The small difference between the valuation results of 58.3, which I just mentioned, and the earlier announced 61 million resulted from small changes in the detailed accruals for the CapEx at end, uh, year end, which had not been finalized when we initially published the valuation results on 16th of January. But this is a rather small deviation. On page six, we come now to the yields of our portfolio and the underlying major valuation parameters that have been applied by our valuators from Jones Lang Lazar. In the chart, you see the development of the weighted NOI yields of our portfolio in gray and the net initial yield below that in blue. The weighted NOI yield of our portfolio now stands at 5.32% and the net initial yield at 5.01%. The average yield increase of nine basis, nine basis points for our portfolio reflects somewhat the situation in the investment market. However, it's fair to say uh, that concerning this development, there are some different views among valuators and agents. The sensitivity valuation, um, of the valuation results to changes um, of the main value drivers of these valuations are provided in the table at the lower part of the slide. As you can see and would expect, the sensitivity is the highest for changes in the assumptions of the rent developments and the discount and cap rates. After the valuation, I would like to now come to the P&L. And let's start on page seven with our revenues. Our results for 2018 are slightly better than expected. Revenues increased by 3% or 6.5 million to now 225 million euro. Our guidance range was between 220 and 224 million. Here the major effect, that's 5.7 million, came from the acquisition of Olympia and Bruno, which has been included in the consolidated figures since end of March 2017. However, also on a like for like, um, sorry, also our like for like sales grew slightly by 0.4% or 800,000 euro. In the lower left, you will find the corresponding bridge, which is easy to construe. On the right side, we now show the share of the revenues between abroad and domestic sales, where you also can see the influence of the acquisition in the Czech Republic. Now on a consolidated basis, 16% of our revenues come from abroad and on a look-through basis, that's taking into account all revenues of our centers according to the effective participation in the properties, such number corresponds to 18%. On the next page, we show, the, the, show you the development of the EBIT um, that has increased, uh, or that has more or less in line with the revenues, sorry, the EBIT increased more or less in line with revenues of 199.1 million, which corresponds to a plus of 3.5%. Here, our forecasted corridor was 193 to 197 million. Center operational costs in 2018, comprising mainly of center management fees, non-rechargeable ancillary costs, maintenance and write-ons on rent receivables, rose just slightly by 0.6 million 
to now 22.2 million and we're basically in line with our projections or concerning write downs even better. Other operating expenses amounted to 5.6 million, that is 1 million lower than the previous year level and in the last year uh, in that period we had some, still some one-off acquisition costs in connection with the acquisition of the Olympia Center that were included in 2017. Overall, Olympia Bruno contributed this year 6.5 million to the increase of the EBIT. Let's now come to the financial result on the next page. And that came out with minus 38.2 million, which is 0.9 million better than in comparison to the financial year 2017. Major, com major components are the operational re at equity result, which now, before valuation, stands at 30.7 million euro. And also the interest cost, which now amount to minus 52.7 million. The results attributable to the minorities accounts for minus 18.4 million, while the remainder of plus 2.3 million comes from the valuation gain resulting from a P&L relevant swap agreement. The overall change of 0.9 million is easy to track by following the finance bridge on the lower left part of the slide. And starting from the left, we have paid 1.1 million more interest for Olympia, that is uh, the interest for one additional quarter in 2018 and realized cost, interest cost savings of 2.4 million for the rest of the portfolio, resulting from loan redemptions and conversions of the convertible bond in 2017, and of course, improved interest rates realized in the course of refinance. The operational at equity profit, excluding swaps, improved slightly by 0.4 million or 0.7%, and the swaps contributed 0.9 million less than last year. All other components remained rather unchanged to the prior year level. On slide 10, we have a closer look to the EBT, excluding valuation, and with 160.9 million, the EBT was also above the expected range of 154 to 157 million and rose nicely by 7.6 million, mainly in particular due to the portfolio expansion, some interest savings, and some like for like turnover growth. Olympia's contribution here was 5.5 million. Looking at the, over, uh, at the operating profit, that's the EPRA earnings on page 11, that has the following result. Operating profit excluding valuation increased from 141.3 to 147.4 million. And due to the higher number of shares issued, EPRA earnings per share fell slightly to now 2.39 Euro after 2.41 Euro in 2017. Here, the impact of the dilution of the convertible bond, which converted end of 2017, becomes visible. Now let's come to the consolidated profit of the group on slide 12. Consolidated profit decreased by 54.9 million and now stands at 79.4 million. It is best explained uh, again to follow along the profit bridge. Olympia contributed an additional 4.8 million. The profit of other standing assets improved the result by a further 1.5 million. And here again, as said before, mainly due to interest cost savings and like-for-like -like turnover growth. The valuation result after tax accounted for minus 57.6 million to, uh, to the change and contained in that numbers are the capex relating to our mall beautification and energy service programs, which improve the attractiveness and the service quality of defined centers. Additionally, this number includes a one-off write-down in connection with the development costs for the plans to conduct a large extension of our center in Gdansk. These plans were stopped already in Q2 last year, and we have reported on that already uh, earlier. All other changes resulting from non-efficient non interest swaps and other deferred taxes were again rather small. So that leads to the earnings per share. They fell from 2.31 Euro to 1.29 Euro. And here, of course, besides the significant valuation result uh, that decreased um, the per share view, uh, that was also affected here by the convertible bond, as explained before. Now, if you want to follow me to the next page and to look at the development of the FFO. The FFO is, of course, one key uh, number uh, for us to look at as it's the basis for distribution of dividends 
the repayment of scheduled loan amortizations and the financing of investments. And 2018, the SFO rose from 148.1 to now 150.4 million. That's also slightly above our guidance of 145 to 148. Um, but looking at the FFO per share, we see decline from 2 euro 54 to 2 euro 43, again resulting from the dilutive convertible bond. However, due to, due to the good operational result, we also ended up above our guidance, which was 2 euro 35 to 2 euro 39. And uh, for your interest, if you want to see the more detailed calculation, you'll find it on the right hand of the slide. <coughs> After the BNL, now let's go to the balance sheet. Um, there were not too many changes. Our asset base was nearly unchanged at 4.6 billion. Uh, as at end of last year, current and non-current financial liabilities stood at 1.52 billion, which was around 24 million lower than uh, at the end of 2017, following scheduled repayments. Non-current deferred tax liabilities increased by 12.8 million to now 452.6 million, mainly resulting from the regular tax depreciation. Other current and non-current liabilities and provisions also remained rather unchanged. The total equity, including minorities, now stands at 2.57 billion and was also almost unchanged. As you can see, our equity ratio remained at a strong 55.8% and the consolidated LTV now stands at 31.8%. On a look-through basis, that's the LTV calculated fully proportionally according to our group share in all assets, the LTV now stands at 34%, also a very reasonable number. <coughs> On slide 15, we show you our EPRA NAV, which remains nearly unchanged at 2.67 billion or on a per share basis at 43.17 euro. And that's mainly because the positive group result and the dividend payment affected in 2018, as well as the changes in the deferred tax liabilities almost netted out. So far, our balance sheet. Um, I would like to give you on the next two pages some more information on our debt. Of our consolidated bank debt, some 835 million become due in the next five years. We still see, as in the recent past, potential for some reductions uh, in our interest cost over the next years. Currently, our consolidated debt bears an interest, an average interest rate of 2.72%, uh, which is already well below the average interest rate that we have reported over the last years. Our weighted maturity of our loan portfolio now stands at 5.4 years. Given the current interest rate environment and, and quotations from banks, we could currently refinance our debt around 1.5 to 2% per annum for 10 years in Germany, and in CE around 25 to 50 bips above that. So we are on a good way to show you further improvements in the course of the year, as and when we will accomplish new closings for some refinancing. I want to finish this presentation with the finance, for, for the financials with our forecast um, for 2019, which you'll find on slide 18. We confirm our targets for the current financial year and anticipate revenues between 222 and 226 million. EBIT should come in between 194 and 198 million, and we expect EBT excluding valuations to be between 158 and 161 million. FFO per share. Uh, is expected to come out between 2 euro 40 and 2 euro 43 and for the total FFO we forecast between 148 and 151 million. So far the preliminary numbers will now provide you with uh, or will provide you with further details in our annual report which will publish uh, end of April or April 20, uh, 29th to be precise. And by then, we also plan to issue our financial forecast for the year 2020. Let's come to the outlook for this year on the next page. Looking at the operations, we continue to roll out our mall beautification and at your service programs. Currently, the main activities are happening in the Altmark Gallery in Dresden and the Bildstedt Center in Hamburg the Rhein-Neckar-Zentrum in Viernheim and the Herold-Center in Norderstedt. 
And additionally, this year we'll plan to start the programs in three more centers, namely the ones in Hamm, Dessau, and Neuenkirchen. While we in general make good progress with such programs, we had hoped to be a bit quicker. We mentioned that also earlier. Um, but as it turns out, um, that we, we need to be a bit more patient in some cases. As for many measures that we plan, we need to apply for building permits, especially in most of the cases the fire protection is uh, involved. So this needs to be considered and we need to apply for those permits, which is a more lengthy process sometimes. Nevertheless, we are on good track. Uh, and the first qualitative surveys show that our customers and shoppers like the new services and atmosphere improvements very much. On the financing side, we are currently working on a refinancing of a total amount of 174 million, maturing in 2020 and 22, and expect to sign it during the first half of this year. As said before, banking market is still positive, and we are confident to agree on attractive terms with the bank here. Finally, we look forward to be able to increase the dividend to one euro for 50 for 2018, and we also plan to further increase the dividend to one euro 55 to, uh, for the year 2019. At the end now for today, and last but not, not least, you're kindly invited to join our sixth edition of our real estate summer on 5th and 6th of September this year. We'd like to show you the rhein Zentrum, the Forum Wetzlar, and the Main Taunus Centrum, including our latest updates on our programs. And of course, we'll provide you with a nice and informative supporting program with speakers and presentations. One topic will be the Digital Mall, our step forward to integrate on an offline shopping center. So, well, thank you for listening, and I'm now happy to take your questions. Operator, please go ahead. The first question comes from the line of Thomas Neuholz with Kepler Schisbury. Please go ahead. Good morning, gentlemen. Um, thank you for my uh, question, uh, taking my questions. I have uh, basically two. Uh, firstly, I was wondering if you can give us an indication what the like for like uh, rental growth uh, uh, was uh, in, in your German ward. Uh, and related to that, on, on page six uh, in, in the valuation report, um, currently um, the the valuer has a, a long-term rental growth assumption of 1.33% uh, in, in the model. How realistic uh, you think uh, this uh, rental growth rate uh, is achievable? What has to happen that you can achieve more than 1% uh, rental growth uh, going forward, given that you're currently uh, below that level? And um, then I was wondering if you can give us uh, uh, an update uh, on the capex needed in 2019 for the mall purification uh, program, and where do you stand generally in terms of your mall purification program? How more? How many more years uh, will it run, and what what total capex could be involved with that? Thanks. Yeah. So starting with the first question, the like for like rental growth. Um, it's pretty stable over the portfolio looking at Germany and abroad. Um, we have some centers in, in Germany that it's still so uh, nice, let's say, um, a little more visible like for like growth. We have others where we give in a little bit at the moment, but this is all no dramatic um, effects. Uh, and so also the, the foreign centers, uh, they have a nice small like for like growth, but there are no big, let's say, variances in the portfolio. Yeah, there's a one and the other performing a little better than the, uh, than the other, but we have no uh, star uh, outperforming with extreme growth, and we have, uh, on the other hand, no, uh, let's say, uh, candidate which looks too dramatic uh, from the downside. So it's, it's all very balanced. Yeah, the valuation, um, of course, I mean, the, the, the model uh, our valuators uh, employ is, um, of course, a discounted cash flow model. Uh, which also uses, of course, inflation. So if you say that average inflation probably is um, higher than that, and of course everybody has an opinion on mid- and long-term inflation, that tells you that uh, they are planning properly to be a bit below that well, when it comes to, to the rent development. Um, I mean, it's, it's always to be adjusted over time, uh, but they have to take assumptions over the mid and long term to come up uh, with their long and mid-term valuation. Um, as I've said before, at the moment we expect the rents a little more to, uh, to be flattish. However, after the, let's say, mid-time period, I don't see when this e-commerce uh, 
let's say, the proportion within the various segments have divided themselves more or less what, what stays offline, what is online, uh, looking at mall digital uh, or, or digital mall and other aspects where all those uh, things grow together. I don't see why we shouldn't come back to a more, um, or oh, let's say, higher like for like growth rates uh, in comparison to the one or the flattish picture we have now in the near and in the midterm. Yeah, so I don't see that as, uh, as yeah, unrealistic. However, of course, uh, it, it's a kind of model with an average growth rate um, which is employed here. For the CapEx, we have said before, um, we, we plan to have 25 to 30 million per annum over the next five years. Of course, this is a rolling model and we wanted to invest a little more upfront. I've told you why we're not as quick as we probably would like to be, uh, but I, th I think that number is still a fair value to assume uh, for, for the planning period. If we can be quicker and we start three projects, as I mentioned before, this year, we'll do so. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, I, th I think it's a reasonable estimate for the time being for on an per annum basis. That's good. Thank you very much. The next question comes from the line of Georg Kander with Bankhouse Lamper. Please go ahead. Mr. Kanders, your line is open. Please go ahead. Oh, hello from Düsseldorf. Um, uh, it's just a question regarding are there substantial sales related wins in the, in the last quarter? Uh, how do they compare to last year? I, I didn't get the first part of the sentence. Are there? From the uh, sub substantial uh, sales related uh, rents. No, they are pretty much on the level of uh, previous year, maybe some tempest deviation. So we, we are happy to see those coming in because we are, I've reported earlier in that call that uh, sales were not as good. Uh, we have talked about the reasons. So we estimated that uh, or looking, um, or let's say we, we're happy to see how they came in on pretty much the same level. Uh, and what, uh, little, uh, little. Could you remind me of the absolute number, was it? Uh, today. 2.2 million is it this 2. year. 2. I think yeah. it was 2.4 uh, million last year. Mm. Yeah, thank you very much. Next question comes from the line of Jochen Schmidt with Metzler. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good morning. I have two questions. The first one is on your revenue outlook for 2019. Um, do you imply any negative like-for-like -like rental income this year, or are you just on the cautious side with regard to your outlook? Um, or are there any minor non-recurring items in also included in 2018 which we should not expect to occur again in 2019? And the second question, very briefly, you have a minor reclassification on your retail turnover 2018, department stores and hypermarkets. Could you just comment on the reclassification? Thank you. Yeah, l let me um, start with the last one because very easy. It's not really a reclassification. It's um, we were always asked what's our b exposure to department stores, and we used uh, the, the department stores also for the big uh, supermarkets. So there is no change, but we added uh, that included in that segment are not only the department stores but also the huge supermarkets uh, which we have in some centers. So you can compare the numbers one to one, but the explanation is better. On the other hand, having said that, uh, our exposure to department stores is very low in terms of turnover uh, or rental turnover. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, with one offs, I mean, uh, in our turnover figures, we also have uh, these penalties when uh, tenants leave the center earlier. Um, and uh, this is a number which is very hard to predict. It's a little less than a million every year. So this could be considered as a non-recurring item. Um, it has been a little higher in the last years when there more, were more changes uh, to that aspect. And of course, it, I mean, turnover rents is a little more, of course, variable. Uh, I mean, the, the name says it. Um, so it really depends on, on uh, the inflation going forward and uh, penalties and turnover rents being the most flexible part. Um, so th they are harder to, to, to estimate. And the, on the other hand, I mean, we have again proven that we have a very stable model. Um, we are by ourselves a little positively surprised. Um, but on the other hand, we have news in the market. There are some tenants uh, struggling. Um, and of course, they are also in some of our centers. So we stay a bit caution of that end. 
Um, but I mean, it's uh, if you take the mid guidance now and let's say 2018 and the mid guidance and this uh, this penalty effect, you're probably again if you you correct for that again in the mid guidance of what we have set for this year. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Thomas Effler with Odo. Please go ahead. Mr. Effler, your line is open. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning. Uh, you mentioned that um, some tenants are um, struggling. Do you have already some cancellations from uh, Gary Weber? And um, uh, do you have any, any new tenants for these, for these outlets? The second question regarding um, the shopping center market, um, regarding the, the cap rates, how you see the price uh, prices in the market. I mean, you mentioned that according to your, your calculations, uh, you see uh, lower prices and, and slightly higher uh, cap rates. And the third one, you mentioned that uh, the um, renovation um, is coming, is well received from the clients. Do you see uh, kind of, uh, well, what is this, the frequency in, in your shopping centers? Uh, where you did the renovations, uh, do they increase or are they stable or how do they develop? Thanks. Yeah. Um, let's start with the tenants that uh, are struggling a bit. I mean, you all read the newspapers and you know whom we're talking about. The name you just mentioned, um, I, I think you, you can accept uh, or will accept that we cannot comment on that. Uh, it's not that old that they have filed for insolvency. Um, we are, of course, in contact with our asset manager, and they are in contact with uh, with Gary Weber. Uh, we have to wait how this develops. Gary Weber needs, they said they want to restructure, um, and they will come up with proposals. And, of course, we're always looking at the spaces, what we could do elsewhere with them, but it's way too early. So let's wait for the restructuring proposal, and then we'll look at it. And maybe j just to give you a flavor, uh, Gary Weber, the brand itself, account for uh, I mean, 0.7% of our total earn turnover, that gives you a little bit the sensitivity, the maximum sensitivity, if you think about in scenarios. Yeah. Um, sorry, yeah, then um, the renovations and the frequencies, I mean, it's too early. We just finished in Magdeburg um, uh, the the full program um, as first center. The other ones will follow, let's say, in the first half of this year. And frequencies you need to follow over, let's say, uh, a bit longer time series. Um, and of course, we had these extraordinary uh, effects last year from uh, from the hot summer. Um, so we will have to follow that. That will be very interesting. But it, I think at the end, it will be hard to calculate that special effect out of that. Um, but of course, we look at those numbers. Uh, but what we do, or when I say we, ECE is doing, they do, of course, service. They talk to the people, they get feedback, whether it's on Instagram, whether they talk, uh, send emails, and it's well received um, that, that our centers would have been in good shape, but are now in a very fresh shape where we do that. And um, yeah, I think uh, we, we get, f especially also for the services, it's not how they look, but with this all uh, improvements when you look for parking, navigation, uh, orientation, I think that's well received. So um, I think we, are con we can, or oh, oh, this confirms that we're on the right track. Yeah, and then uh, talking about cap rates and prices, yeah, if you just knew them, um, at the moment, I, as I mentioned before, there's hardly any turnover in Germany of bigger shopping centers at the moment. Um, if, if you talk to agents, um, they, they think that the market will be slow also this year. Um, how that at the end relate to prices? Um, I mean, we, we have never guided on that before, but of, of course, uh, we don't expect prices to rise at the moment. So let's see whether it's stabilized or whether there are uh, some, some other effects coming up to us. Okay. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Kai Klose with Berenberg. Please go ahead. Yes, very good morning. I've got a question regarding the um, lease expiries you show on page number uh, four. Uh, from your contact with the tenants, what have you received so far regarding their willingness to extend or to potentially move out? Also in the context of the uh, increased rent to sales ratio, um, what, what are the comments of your feedback? What is the feedback of the tenants and what do you expect in terms of rent levels and also in terms of lease maturities? And um, I, I think I missed the answer on the first question. What was the split of the like-for-like -like rentals between Germany and uh, the non-German malls? And we have a like-for-like -like, uh, growth of, 
let's say 0.4% overall. Um, so we would have to mathematically split that up, but we look from a portfolio uh, view on that. Um, so it's a bit higher in, uh, in abroad than it's in Germany. Yeah, and we can could prepare that number to you, but even I think in the German centers we saw on average uh, slightly light for light growth. And the first, can we, um, that was, uh, the, no, yeah, the releasing you're talking about and the maturity profile. Um, I mean, the best number to measure that is that we are still, and we're just two months in this year, are fully leased. So uh, people stay or we find new uh, replacements for the tenants. Um, so what we see is, and, and you also see uh, that we still show some slight uh, like for like growth so that on average uh, we can keep uh, the rental level or even slightly improve it. However, there are shifts. I mean, uh, I, I would say it's, it's no secret that the pressure on rents is um, higher in, in shoes, leather, and, and textile. On the other hand, we have good performers um, uh, over, over mid-series. Yeah, last year was bad for many uh, um, of, the, of the tenants because of the weather conditions, but on average, health, uh, uh, drugstores, beauty, and they, they all perform fine, so we get uh, nicer increases there. So, uh, but on average, um, we, we are slightly in a plus. Yeah, and with the maturity profile, um, as I also said before, um, of course, uh, some tenants get more risk averse or just want to re, uh, re um, let's say, extend for five years or sometimes seven and a half years or have some break, make 10 years, have some break options. So this increases a little bit. But again, here, the best number is to look at, uh, at the average, um, let's say, vault that we have, which is a little above 5%, five, 5 which still is a good number, but came down in the last years. And I, I expect the trend to be more uh, going towards shorter extensions on average um, in comparison to five or ten years ago, which is also not a surprise. But, but oh, all on stable levels. If you look at the walls of other, let's say, peers of us uh, or where you can get the data, I think uh, with five years we are well well positioned. Yeah. Yeah. And um, my last, last question would be, um, could you indicate what was the uh, rental arrear? What were the rental arrears um, in 18 compared to 17? Uh, maybe I, can you explain what you mean with arrears? Or the the outstanding rents or the loss of rents? Ah, oh, the loss of rents. Sorry, it's uh, less than half a percent. Sorry, the write downs. Yeah, again a very low number. So it was uh, around yeah. a million, one million, which is if you compare that to 220. Five million turnover, uh, half a percent, which is a very good number. Thanks so much. Next question comes from line of Mihail Tonchev with Com Kempen. Please go ahead. Hi, good, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, just a couple of questions from me. Uh, first one is really a clarification. Um, does your 2019 FFO guidance include any projected uh, refinancing savings? Because you, you mentioned you're going to work on the about 164 million in uh, in the first half. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's this we have a uh, uh, the first refinancing 2019 starting in August 2019. It's already refinanced with 2.2 percent. That is included. And for all the other loans made during 2020 and the following, we have an indication of uh, three percent or an assumption of, of three percent. Though uh, to be fair, uh, currently we are negotiating for loans made during 2020 and 22, and the current indication is 1.5 uh, percent uh, for 10 years maturity. Okay, and that's uh, okay. That's very clear. Um, switching uh, switching gears. So you mentioned earlier on that there were quite a few different views between the valuers uh, um, when the uh, valuation was done. Can you maybe just elaborate what the different views are, and perhaps is it on the ERV growth side? Is it more on the yield side because there's a lack of comparable transactions, or is it more on the capex side of the equation, or, or is it all three? Yeah, I mean, uh, I have done a, a scientific survey on that, but I was talking about yields, yeah, and there was a little bit of discussion in the real estate press, um, but if you look at the peers that have also, uh, that are public and um, have some centers in Germany, they all uh, devaluated just a bit like we, in more or less in the same amount, and was more about yields. And um, obviously some of the agents still think um, that last year some yields, especially for trophy assets, have improved. That might be true. 
Um, but as there were no so, so much a deal flow, the question was, was already the turning point in 2018? Will it happen in 2019? So again, not very dramatic, um, let's say, switches up and down. But as it was overall a turning point for us, I think I thought it was fair just to mention that there are, yeah, probably other views, um, but not dramatic other views. Okay, that's uh, very clear. And just last one for me. So you're in a pretty reasonably strong financial position, so 34% uh, look through LTV. Um, could you remind us of, uh, and I know you have quite a few uh, financings on asset level, but can you remind us of the debt covenants on the LTV uh, side of the equation and even on the net interest coverage? Uh, yes, we have, we have a few, very few uh, loans or agreements with LTV covenants. And the LTV covenants are at around 60 to 70 percent. Mm-hmm. So as you can see, we are by far uh, below these levels. Yeah. Um, and on an inter- net interest coverage basis? Uh, that is what um, ICR is uh, roughly 100, 200 percent. And we are by far uh, be, uh, above that. Yeah. Let me see the current figure, the actual figures of that. In my, we have one minute. Yep. Yes. Uh, ICR has to be minimum 150 percent, and we are currently on a level of uh, 360 percent. Perfect. I think that's an important point. Uh, yeah. Thanks for taking my questions. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. There are no further questions registered at this time. I would like to hand back to Mr. Wilhelm to for closing comments. Yeah, thank you for uh, dialing in. Um, we're happy to show you good numbers for 2018, even though in a tough environment. I will work hard uh, that this goes forward positively. I uh, wish you a good rest of the week and uh, hello to Dusseldorf. Okay? Thank you. Bye-bye.